Blackhawks fans, it's again time for some playoff hockey. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to Chicago here on NHL 23. We are here at the 2029 NHL playoffs, and our first round matchup is here against the Seattle Kraken. So let's uh, let's retake a look at their team one more time. We had a look at them in the last video, and if you did miss that, I will leave a link in the description below. So go check that one out, and I also have a playlist of all the videos of this series um, on my channel as well. So uh, yeah, so Seattle, we've already taken a look at their team last episode, but in case uh, you needed a reminder, here is their forward group and defensive group here, obviously being carried pretty heavily by Quinn Hughes here. So um, hopefully we were able to expose some of their other defenders. And then in goal, they have Nico, Dawes, and Jarenko. So it's going to be an interesting matchup for us. I think it's definitely a beatable team. They were only four games above 500, and if you count overtime losses, they were under 500. So considering that we were the President's Trophy winning team, uh, we should be able to come home with the victory here in this series, and hopefully many more after that. So let's waste no time here. First game in the United Center. Um, one more look at our lines. I don't think I'm going to change anything because these are the lines we had going into the playoffs, and they seem to work out well for us. Obviously, Leonov had that big step up of a year, 76 points, and he's going to want to get paid now. So uh, we tried to extend him last video. He said no, so that might screw us a little bit. But hopefully we can make that run this year at least to make it worth it. I will try to bring him back, of course. Him and uh, Lenny I want to keep. But we're going to see what we can do with the cap space given. So game number one here in the United Center. Let's get right into it here. And here we are. Seattle versus Chicago. First period. 2 nothing Hawks. There we go. Alex Dabrinka on the power play. And McAllister. Shots are 17-7. to We are dominating them so far. Let's just keep that going. Second period. All right. 3 nothing. Connor Bedard getting on the score sheet. We are still out shooting them 27-15. to And let's get into the third period. There we go. Dabrinka once again on the power play. Making it 4 nothing Blackhawks. Uh, shots are still heavily in our favor. We have over 30 already. So uh, we are just peppering Nico Dawes. Another power play for us. Can Dabrinka get a hat trick? Nope. De Silva with the goal, though, right after it expires. This is looking like an easy game one for the Hawks. Five to nothing. Can we retain that? And dare I say, shout out for UC Saros in his debut for this year. So, yep, Dabrinka get the two goals. A 22 save shout out for Saros. And then De Silva with a goal and assist on the fourth line given. So um, just an overall great effort from our team there. You can see that 5-2 victory we had at them in the last game of the season. So if that is any indicator of the series, which I hope it is, uh, there is that. So game number one in the books. Obviously don't want to change anything. That was um, exactly what we wanted in that one. So let's get on to game number two here. First period here of game two. All right, 0-0. Zero, zero. Um, they are shooting us only by only by one. But um, yeah, no score remain. The, uh, the goaltender's battling out so far. Second period. All right, there we go. 3-1 to one Hawks. Shea Theodore, De Silva, and Dabrinkit for us. And a Johnson for them. And let's get into the third period. We are out shooting them so far. If we can get the next goal, that would be huge because that is the difference between a three-goal game and a one-goal game. Um, but I'm cool with just sticking with this lead, to be honest. Power play for Seattle, though, midway through the third. We do kill that one off. Under five minutes left. Can we hang on to this game? And it's looking like we are going to do just that. And Green with the empty netter to seal the deal. We actually double them in shots, 42 to 21. And once again, a good showing from Saros, which is what I'm actually really watching here. Uh, that fourth line has been great as well. I think Green's on that third line now, I believe. But um, De Silva picking up another goal there. And then let me, I'm pretty sure Green's on the third line, right? Yeah. Yep, because McAllister's down there on the fourth. But yeah, either way. Fourth line, look at that, plus three is across the board, and uh, they're all over point per game, or at point per game at least. Uh, third line has been, I mean, even, so that's good. Uh, second line, a plus one, and then that first line, plus two, beautiful. Defensively, Korchinski has an assist. Those two are plus three. Kasparais and Theodore, plus two, and plus one's there. And then, of course, UC Saros, only two games in, but a great showing from him. So that is... Um, Pretty much how we would have, we couldn't have asked for any better of a start to a series right there. Um, now we are facing in Seattle and Climate Pledge Arena, so maybe a bit of a challenge for us now, but I think uh, we should be all right with this team. So, first period is one to one. McAllister for us and Gruel for them on the power play. Shots are double in our favor, 14 to 7. So, uh, let's hope we can just get a couple more past Nico Dawes. Second period. All right, so two to one. Michael McLeod. 
um, able to give Seattle the lead. Uh, we have one goal on 24 shots, so we need the offense to set, uh, step it up. And Saros has given up two goals on 16 shots, so I also need him to step it up. So third period, full effort from our team is needed. Power play early for Seattle. We do kill it off. Um, we are still heavily out shooting them. Can we get that next goal? Can we get a goal? Um, we're going to need another one if we want a chance to win this game. So five minutes left. We're going to need a late hero here to tie this game. Can we get a late goal? No. So Nico Daz steals a game for the Seattle Kraken. 32 saves, only one goal against. And they come away with a 2-1 to one victory in the first game in Seattle. All right. That's all right. Just, uh, I would say just shake it off. I don't really have any reason to panic. Like I said, it's only been another game since we looked. And, yeah, obviously it's going to go down a little bit. These, these guys are actually a plus four now. They, they play great. So, yep, everything is pretty much the same there. And then Saros was able to regain, um, well, he had a great third period, so that saved his game there. But we just weren't able to get another goal on Nico Dawes there. So here we go, game four. This is huge. A difference between a 3-1 to one series lead and a completely dead tie series. So first period here in game number four. All right, one nothing Seattle. Luke Misa on the power play. Shots are thirteen to eight in our favor. We just we got to start scoring, man. Our offense needs to wake up. Second period. There we go. Two goals from the Hawks there in the second period. Connor Bedard on the power play and Martin HS with a goal. Only fifty-seven seconds left in the period. So huge third period for us. We desperately need to win this game. And that'll set us up greatly to win the series. But Jared McCann ties it for Seattle. But there is Connor Bedard right back in. And then Kempe on the power play. A crazy start to this third period. Um, as there is goals going everywhere now. It's kind of died down. Power play for Seattle. All right, kill it off. The Hawks get a power play after. And we give up a goal right after the power play. Shane Wright makes it 4-3 and gets the empty netter. you got to be shitting me, guys. Holy hell, man. What the hell is going on? So Seattle, um, obviously not a good game from Saros. We can't be having that, man. Oh, shit. Catone had three assists for us. All right. So 2-2 two to two heading back to Chicago. That just completely, all of our momentum completely went away. And our uh, lead in the series has also gone away. So first line, I mean, Lenny has been pretty quiet. I'm going to move to bring it back up there. That line has been... Uh, um, our line for a while and Debrinka has three goals in the series so that moving Lenny down last year helped him so hopefully that'll do it again and that fourth line has just been absolutely killer still defensively I mean bottom pairing is only even but I mean that's all you can really ask for him and I mean Saros has been good despite not having a good showing in that game but I mean he's earned having a little bit of a rough one after the first two and I guess three games so oh yeah definitely three games he only gave up two goals so yeah, um, we just, I, there's nothing much I can do, man. We just, we shouldn't be having this much trouble against Seattle, but I, I guess it is the playoffs, so you never know. But, all right, game five here, we're back in Chicago. We have not lost at home yet. Actually, neither team has, but hopefully that trend will continue here, and then hopefully we can take game six as well. So first period, game five, back in Chicago. Oh, oh my god, we gave up 18 shots in that period. That wasn't even really Saros' fault. So, Fortier uh, Gendron or Gendron for them and Michael McLeod. But holy hell, man. How do we get outshot 18-5 to with this roster against Seattle? Um, yeah, 2 nothing cracking, but we need, to, we, need, we need to come back. We need to wake up. We only got five shots in that period, which would be bad enough, but we gave up 18, which is horrible. So this is a crucial second period into this se uh, for our season, but in this series. So second period. All right, there we go. Dabrinka and Bedard get us back in this game on the power play. They tie it up, and we need to win this game here. Third period. We have the momentum, if you want to say that. Power play, it's been good for us, but it does not go anywhere on that one. There we go. Martin HS on the power play as soon as I say that. Three to two Hawks. Ten minutes left. We need to shut it down, and we could use another goal. And... And Luka Misa scores. The fourth line fucking rookie, of course. Four minutes left. Can we get a late hero here in the third period? Or are we heading to overtime? We are heading to overtime here in game number five. And we're going to jump in here to see what happens. But, man, we should have had that game. We had the lead. And then we just... I mean, Saros, again, the timing on these goals, man. It's That's been your story. So, we'll see what happens here. I don't want to pull him because he's played good, but... 
it's like he also just does this bullshit. <laughs> so here we go though, overtime. In game number five, Korchinski just moves it right up the left circle and then he throws it to no one. Katone, Korchinski has it back. He's taken down. Katone down into Brinkett. And we lose the puck. Great. So uh, Bedard doesn't even touch the puck there, which is concerning. Here's right. His pass deflects right to Debrinkit. What a crazy play. Bedard is in, and he has stopped twice. Rebound, Katone. What are you doing? Oh, my God. There is no way we are this bad. There is no way this game is serious. That is some fucking bullshit, dude. I will call it straight out of the... Just straight up, dude. There's no way an NHL player can't score that. Bedard, another shot is saved. But there is no way we couldn't have scored that. It seems like every time we jump in, it does not favor us. Leonov comes up with a shot, a big save by Dawes. But holy shit, before they even break it out, dude, what is EA? EA for, uh, Sports, dude. What is this? So let's go back to this. Holy hell. First of all, the Bedard save is fair. It was a good save by Dawes. And then the second one, it's right there. You're telling me Catone in this moment couldn't just happen in right there. Instead, he has to pick it up, curl it, and then shoot that, which is blocked. And then on the rebound, his backhander goes wide somehow. Like, there, there's no way that was real. There's no way that was real. Um, yeah, and now here comes Seattle. That I swear, dude, if we lose to some bullshit again. It, and Leonov with the pick. Here he comes. Timothy Leonov, though. Hopefully we can just get a goal anyway. Leonov, a big shot. A save from Dawes, who has been great in this overtime to start. And out comes Seattle. But yeah, that is... That is bad, dude. We should have had this game won right there. But this game's uh, animations say otherwise. Leonov gets another turnover there. He is tied up, though, and he's still fighting for it. I'll give him that. And But he does not prevail with it. Here comes Matty Beneers. Over to Gruel, who gets a shot. That one is saved. Gruel again, backhander. Saved. Rebound Beneers. And you see Sorrow shutting the door right now, which is what we need because apparently we can't <laughs> score on wide open nets. Uh, Seattle controlling it here. McCann tries to move it out. Is unable to do so. McCann has it now in the half fall. Down to Beneers. Gets an open shot. Big save from Saros. And he will cover. I'm <laughs> I'm still in shock that we did not score that, dude. There is no fucking way. Absolutely no way. As we will have a big defensive zone faceoff. We have the second line out there. Natchez, Leonov, and Lenny. And Natchez is able to win the faceoff. Kasparitis breaks it out. And here comes Lenny. I don't think he scored yet in the series. We can use a big goal, but here comes Natchez. Over to Leonov, but it is taken away, and we can't get it back. Why would Natchez not go in there again this game? is just not doing anything right. And now here comes Tolvanen, but he is stripped. Natchez has it. It gets out of the zone at least. This is just a clusterfuck right now. What the hell? And then we give up a two-on-one somehow. Like, <laughs> the AI has to be against us, dude. There's no way. There is no way this is real right now. And it looks like we are going to go with the third line. They have their fourth line, which apparently, has, like, Luke Misa is just the greatest fourth liner of all time. Him and uh, DeSova for us. And we get another big defensive zone face off. Theodore around to Kasparitis, and we will break out here. Ryan Green has it, just skates into some players, and taken away by Caswell. Come on, dude. Give me something, Caswell. Nope. <laughs> Nope. Uh, Fortier, that I don't, I don't even know how the fuck to say his name. He scored a goal the other game. Um, here comes Luca Misa, who actually... I, didn't he have the tying goal in this game, right? He had the 3-3 three to three tying goal, I believe, on the power play, too. I think so, anyway. My memory is horrible. Uh, and he, Caswell just turns it over straight up. We can use another shift from the first line, to be completely honest, because their X-Factors, they just drive play crazy, and hopefully that shit doesn't happen anymore. I know Katone is not a goal scorer, but there is no way he cannot score that. As Seattle has the puck carrying it into our zone. Kempe, and that shot was blocked by Yarventi. Kempe right in front. Big save from Saros. Exactly what we needed. As Caswell breaks up, and here is Bedard. Here we go. Come on, first line. Con Bedard breaks it in. Throws it over to Debrinkit. Debrinkit moves in, but it's <laughs> skating to the goalie, dude. The animations are so bad. Oh, this is so hard to watch. Kempe over to Gendon, whatever the fuck this guy's name is. And Debrinkit has it now for us. He's able to... Oh my god, he almost got around uh, Quinn Hughes there, but he's able to shut the door. 
Pelika takes it back up for us now. Skating backwards, and we give it to Korchinski. Ooh, big risky pass there to Bedard. But he gets it up to Catone. Can he make up for his shit from earlier? No one can get the puck. Catone shoots. That one's saved, and we can't get the puck somehow. As Chovan for them, and Pelika goes for the hit. Don't know if that was a good idea. What a save from Saros. Holy shit. A desperation save. Holy hell, he is a beast in the fucking... Actually watching the games. My god. De Silva, number 97. Has that one taken away from him. But holy hell, what a save from Saros. That was crazy. Um, holy hell. Uh, Shane Wright back up for Seattle now. Can we give him some help, man? Holy fuck. Porskov has it for us now. It looks like our bottom pair for everything is out. And five seconds left. McAllister might have a lane here. Over to De Silva. Can he end it? The puck is still loose, and we're unable to get another shot. And this game will go into a second overtime. What a crazy first overtime that was. Holy hell. I am still pissed about not scoring, but... I just, we just need to find a way to win this game, man. I don't, I don't feel good about this right now, if I'm going to be completely honest with you. It seems like we're going to get every opportunity just to give up. Like, we keep giving up those odd man rushes. Uh, Pelica went for that hit that one time, gave up that two-on-one. So hopefully we can end it before something bad like that happens. Connor Bedard has it now. I trust him with the puck, though. As, of course, he turns it over right on cue. Quinn Hughes, or no, that's Adrian Kempe now for the Kraken. We're fighting for it down there. Katong gives it to Debrinket. He moves in with the shot. Big save, Nico Dawes. Got to elevate that puck, ADB. As he will cover. And an offensive zone faceoff coming up for us here. And we're going to leave the first line out there. I like that. So, Bedard, I would love if you can win this faceoff for me right here. And uh, I, I seen they were out shooting us in that intermission report. But hopefully that doesn't mean anything. Debrinket to Katone. Pelica. Katone gets the shot. That one is saved. I mean, we're getting high-quality chances here, especially this first line, but we just can't get one past Dawes. He has been great for Seattle. As Wright takes it up for them, that one is... Here, he is hit off the puck, and... Ah, oh, we just couldn't catch up to that pass. And Bowie, I'm over to Chovan, I believe that was. Again, we went for that hit, so... Pelica is ultra-aggressive right now. Don't know if that's going to work out in our favor, but here comes Alex Dabrinkit. A weird move. Gets it over to Pelica, but that one is just blocked. I don't know why he thought he had a lane there, but I digress. Leonoff now for Chicago. We get it up to Debrinkit. He's still out there, and he turns it right over to Manny Beneers. And he's able to get right past Kasparaitis for the moment, but Kasparaitis is able to shut him off. There we go. Good play. Or excuse me, Korchinski that was. As Pelica moves it up to Natchez, our highest paid player, actually. And he just turns it over. We gotta stop doing this one and done, man. We gotta start moving the puck, getting some shots. At least from other lines. The first line has done great. And even even the fourth line, even out there. De Silva had a couple chances at the end of the last overtime. Wow, what a big save. Saros again. Um, every time Seattle gets in the zone, Saros has to make a big save. So we gotta watch that as well. So here we go. Defensive zone faceoff. Natchez versus Beneers. That second line still out there. Lenny, I'm going to call your name, man. You have not scored yet in this series, to my knowledge. And you have been pretty quiet overall in this game that we've seen, too. So I'm going to call on you to get to just make a big play. I don't even care if you scored or not. And a post there from Beneers as Saros is forced to cover. I keep switching between Saros and Saros. But um, regardless, he has come up big for us at the moment. As they're going with their third line, and we're going to stick with our second line out there. As it's Natchez versus Johnson on the faceoff. And once again, Natchez cannot win that faceoff. Tovalin now in. He gets a backhander off. Saros the save. And he will cover once again. <laughs> oh, the AI is very predictable, I will say that. As it is the same setup. Come on, Natchez. You're getting paid $12.5 million almost. You got to win a faceoff here. Come on. There you go. Theodore has it, able to get it to Kasparaitis. Hopefully we can break it up, and that we do. Or break it out, excuse me. Leonov able to feed it to Natchez, and he just couldn't get that pass to Lenny. Oh, man, we were inches away there from essentially having the game-winning goal. But um, unable to feed it through. Leonov just gets rocked there at center ice. And Diagostini will break it out to Eli Tolvanen, who has a lane here. 
And it gives it back. Big save again by Saros. Another big turnover. And Saros forced to make another big save. Johnson now. He's hit off the puck. But McLeod. And Saros again covering up. He is keeping us in this game. Come on, guys. We need to score. Score for our goaltender. He has played his ass off in this one. As we're going to finally send out our third line. They have their um, fourth line. Who has been like a crazy energy line for them, it seems. And they're able to win the faceoff. A big shot from their defenseman there. I'm not even going to try his name at this point. But that one is blocked. As they take it back. A big poke there from Nazar. And oh, if he would have just pressured Dawes, we could have got an offensive zone faceoff. Again, the AI just does not recognize what to do. Luke Misa hit off the puck there. Shea Theodore has it. He's able to get around. But then what the fuck was that game? Furkus has it to Mukamadoulin. Furkus, a big shot and a save from Saros. But what the hell, man? This game is trying to give Seattle this game, I swear. And uh, we're probably going to send out the fourth line. Nope, we're going to keep the third line. They're going to keep their fourth line out there as well. 147 to go here in the second overtime. Will we see a goal in this overtime is the question. And I probably shouldn't say that while they're in the offensive zone. But we have the puck now. Frank Nazar, he's been a mainstay on this team for a long time. A nice feed over to Green, a big shot. And that one saved by Dawes. And we were able to get an offensive zone face-off at the very least. 136 remaining here. We do send out that fourth line, and they counter with their second line. So, interesting matchup here. Can we get a big offensive zone face-off win by McAllister? We cannot, as McCann able to get it out here for Seattle. Beneers drops back. Mukamadoulin has it now. I believe the defenseman is on the rush here. He curls back. Able to find Beneers a big save. Saros again. Man, they have to have like 50 shots at this point. Because I think they had 42 after the end of the last overtime. So, um, I, I would think they... I mean, Saros has been just incredible this game. We need to win him this game, man. As Chavon... Saros was down. I don't know if it was blocked or saved by him. But again, desperation shown by Saros. He is giving it his all in this game. But can our forwards come up big here with a goal? McAllister moves in. Can't get a shot off him. God damn it, dude. Why can't nobody do anything but the first line? <laughs> X-Factors are just too much, I guess. Big save again, Saros. Holy hell. A minute left to go in the second overtime. Please get the first line out there. My God. And nope, we stick with the fourth. I don't know if that's a good idea. We only got a minute left in this overtime. They'll get a little bit of a break. I would send out that, for that first line. As we are able to win the faceoff, but Saros is going to have to cover. God damn it, this game. Oh, a lot of tedious shit here by the AI. This might be a long overtime that we're in here for. As Shane Wright versus McAllister on this faceoff. Used to Chovan. He can't get a shot off your check for us controls. And he'll get it up to De Silva. He made stuff happen in the last end of the last overtime. Can he do so again? We do a jump and, dump and chase, but don't chase. So don't know about that one. We're able to get a turnover there, though. Porshkov. Oh, McAllister could have had a lane if he could have got that puck cleanly. But Porshkov, you're a great... Oh, you had the lane, dude. Like, I don't understand. Why are you passing in that situation? You had the lane. As... Okay, there we go. Dobrynk gets back on the ice. 26 seconds left. And he needs to stop doing that deking shit and just turning it over. It's been him that's doing it specifically, too. As we're getting the first line out here now, can we get something before the end of this overtime? Seattle has it, though. It's going to be them, if anyone, to score here, it looks like. Bedard, good pressure. Chauvin has it. Bedard, just don't give up a shot. Holy shit. All right, there we go. And <laughs> you can say we survived that period because I think Seattle got the better of the chances there. As what, what, How many shots do they have? They have 49 shots. So they will, unless we win this game and they don't shoot, they will get up to 50 shots. So, here we go, a third overtime. My god, this game is going to go on for half the video, it seems. I might have to cut this up. So, I may, may be doing all this commentating for nothing, but... I just... Please just win this fucking game. Oh my god. Pelican now has it for us. Catone. Can we do anything? We need to do something while this first line's out here. Wright has it, though. To Chovan. And Bedard gets it back. Come on, Connor. I need a big play from you. You're our captain. I need you to come up big for me. I've called out Lenny, but you are the captain of this team. I need something from you. Dabrinkit has it now. Down to Korchinski. Over to Catone. Bedard. 
This game, this game is horrible, dude. Oh my god. You're telling me that's what Conor Bedard would do in that situation? Like, I don't fucking think so. As Pelica just gets absolutely mauled. We have, they had three guys on him. And we were somehow not, nobody was open. We do have it back now, though. Catone. Holy, Kempe's been a beast for them in this overtime, too. He has got so many turnovers. And Catone has been horrible, dude. Like, you should have ended it um, a while ago. As we are just trying to force feed shit through. And Dubrinka, again, another turnover from him. He has been absolutely awful as well. But, unfortunately, the first line has been the only line to do anything in this overtime for us. So, I don't know. I, don't, I, <laughs> I just do not feel good about this. I'm going to be honest. All right, dude, they, they have to fix that. Like, Deeks aren't always warranted, and they hardly ever work, as holy hell, that backhander almost went through another big save in front. Saros, again, another big save. He is putting the team on his back. As we will have another defensive zone faceoff here to worry about. And uh, it's going to be Nate Chas versus Beneers here. This has been too long of an overtime. So we need to end it here. Not Seattle, please. There we go. Big save against Saros. 9-0-1 left in the third overtime. This might be a uh, Florida Carolina rematch. Because <laughs> this has gone on way too long. I thought maybe we would, you know, five minutes of gameplay or whatever. But my god. <laughs> I'll name it to control it on the face off there. Here is Lenny for us. I called him out earlier. Can he make something happen here? A toe drag gets him with the slapper, and we block our own shot. That is just... I, I'm not even surprised, to be to be honest with you. I am not surprised. Tolvanen to Johnson. Around the net to McLeod. McLeod over to Tolvanen. And another... The, dude, this is so awful to watch. If, if you guys are seeing this whole thing, I am so sorry. This game cannot program competent AI for the life of them. As Lenny has it here, he's able to get around over to Natchez, and he scores! Martin Natchez, holy fuck, we're finally done. But Martin Natchez, thankfully, it was in our favor, gets the overtime winner. And Chicago will take a 3-2 lead in the series. My god, that was hard to watch. Um, big saves, this game, the first star is Saros, I don't care what the game says, the first star is absolutely UC Saros. As he just completely put the team on his back, especially especially in these three overtimes. But Natchez, the hero for us. I call I kinda called him out earlier too, our highest paid player. And he's able to bury that one right in the slot. As Chicago will take a three to two lead here, heading into game six back in Seattle. Hopefully we can just close it out there because holy fuck I do not want to go through this again. But Martin Natchez in the third overtime, the hero for Chicago. 4-3 is your final. And did they give Saros the uh, the third star? Can I even look at this? Where the fuck? Can I really not look at this? I, I thought I could. Oh, it'd be in this screen. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna wait for it. <laughs> I'm gonna assume he got the first star with the numbers he probably put up in that game. So a four to three victory for us. And what a game it was indeed. As we will head on now to game number six here in Seattle. Let's hope we can close this out here in six games. I'm just going to leave the lines how they are. First period in Seattle. Our, wow, high scoring game. Boyum and Wright. Wright scored with four seconds left. That is a ball buster of a goal. But Lenny, Caswell, and Theodore there for us. Lenny does get his, I believe, his first goal, like I said, of the series. Uh, shots are 13 8 in our favor. Definitely not a goaltender's game so far. I just, just please win this fucking game. Second period, still 3-2 goaltenders um, decide to come up big in that period. And a huge third period. There we go. Natchez again, an early goal in this third period. And then Natchez again on the power play. Is that a hat trick for him? No, he didn't score in that first period. But either way, what a series he has had. Um, but wait a minute now. Uh, Ferk is for them, but Catone gives us back that three-goal lead 30 seconds later. And it looks like five minutes left. Another power play for Chicago. Goes nowhere. But the Chicago Blackhawks will win round number one against Seattle in six games. Final score, 6-3 to three in game number six. Nate has five points, two goals, both in the third. And we will have it. Wow, Nate has 12 points in six games played. That is a great series from him. 
So we will take a look at our lines here. As first line, uh, six assists for Catone there, six points for Bedard. So they were solid point per game, but that second line. Okay, Leonov only two, two assists, so he has to step up in this next series. Um, but Nate has 12 points, five goals, and Lenny, after being moved down, seemed to find his game a little bit there. I would like to see a little bit more goal scoring from him, though, as well. Only one in that series. Third line, they were honestly not good at all. Minus is there. And how about that fourth line? Plus three, plus two, and a plus two. I'm going to leave the lines the same for now. They worked out for us. Um, top pair was good. Bonnet, second pair was decent. Third pair was solid. And then UC Saros, what a what a playoff round for him in that one. He absolutely needed that to show himself and to show us that he can be trusted here. As round number two will be a divisional rival, the St. Louis Blues, who went 47-29 in six this season. So let's take a look at them here. St. Louis, well, okay, first line, Snuggerud, Thomas, and Cairo. Definitely a very good first line. Uh, second line, Zach Dean, Leo Carlson, and uh, Martone. Martone's a bit weaker on that second line, but these two obviously uh, very solid for that second line in themselves. Uh, third line, Bull Duke, Lindstrom, and Holton in. Fourth line, Conway, Hobbs, and Brad Seg. So a solid forward core from the Blues defensively. They have Gileev and... What? Dude. <laughs> what? How do you have BRZ and then have like... a? Like, he has a Z, a W, and a Z. Like, two Zs and a W in his last name. That is crazy. Um, but Henry there, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll call him. Uh, Oliver Bonk and Gustav Forsling on the second pair. Luf and Provorov. So, a decent defensive pair. Pretty weaker, especially compared to ours. But, um, yeah, this guy's actually a really young stud here. They actually have two young defensemen there. Um, but Provorov making five and a half million on that third pairing for three more years is going to hurt him and then in goal they have uh Zavrogin I'm going to go with uh Yegor Zavrogin who had a a decent round uh whoever they faced in the first round so again I think this is a beatable team they definitely have some weapons in Cairo and Thomas among others and Leo Carlson of course but I mean we we got to beat these teams man we just we got we got to make this run I it's it's cup or bust for us at this point. There's no excuse of us being a young team. We've been in the playoffs the last few years. We won the President's Trophy this year, so um, we got to put it together. Like I said at the beginning, so round number two, game number one against St. Louis. Of course, we're gonna have home ice advantage against everybody because we were the best team in the NHL. So first period here against St. Louis, game number one in Chicago. All right, and they're leading two to one. Lindstrom and Brand Seg for them, and Natchez. What a series, or what a playoffs he's had so far, getting the goal for us. They actually got 18 shots in that first period. So similar to that one game against Seattle. Hopefully, we can uh, our offense can get going. We can shut it down and have a better second period. So second period is all right. A goal each once again. Cairo on the power play for them, and to bring it for us to get us back within one. They already have 34 shots, so we just need to wake up. Um, both offensively and defensively. And there we go, Timothy Leonoff, after struggling in that Seattle series, gets a big goal for us on the power play. And then, damn it, Galeev right back for them on the power play. They already have 41 shots to our 25. And there we go, Berkeley Catone, another guy who needs to step it up, um, at least in the goal scoring. And Shea Theodore, there we go, our assistant captain. A 5-4 lead for Chicago. Can we hang on to this comeback? And that we will. What a great game from us. Five to four, we come back after being down. Chicago showing resiliency, which is a big key for a, a, a cup contender um, and a, a cup winner as well. So uh, we were able to step it up there. Hopefully we can uh, not allow 40 shots in this game, but I will take the game one victory there for sure. So game number two here, still in Chicago. Uh, we're just going to keep it rolling. Come on. First period of game number two. Holy hell. 4 nothing Chicago. Connor Bedard, Caswell, Catone, and Poroshkov. Um, Zav Zavrogin gets ran out of the building as they have to put in Chris Drieger, who actually gives up the go a goal himself. Um, don't blow this, guys. We only gave up seven shots in that period, but do not get overconfident. There is still a lot of hockey left. Second period. All right, 6-1. to one. Uh, Lenny and Catone for us and Bull Duke for them. And I would hope we can hang on to this game. My goodness, it would take a, a measurable amount of goal scoring 
for them to come back. And Forsling does get an early one here, so... Um, yeah, something to watch, I guess. The power play here for St. Louis does go nowhere. Another power play. I mean, we're trying to give it to him. A long one as well. And we do kill it off. So we will take game number two in convincing fashion. 6-2. to two. UC Saros once again shuts the door. Which is the big story for me, at least. A 9-3-5 for him. 29 saves. Caton with two goals. Debrinket, three assists. Caton has been scoring a lot of goals in this series. My God. Uh, so we take a 2 not to lead on St. Louis in convincing fashion. But once again... That's how the Seattle series went, but once we went back to Seattle, we started to struggle. So, um, yeah, let's let's get a three nothing lead on them. Let's really push them against the wall and uh, take a stranglehold on the series. So let's see if we can do that here in St. Louis, game number three, first period. All right, two to one a lead for us. Forsling another goal. He gets one right away, but Leonov and Korchinski for us answer right back. Shots are eighteen to five. So. Uh, yeah, as long as we can get a couple more passes is averaging, we should be looking good here. Second period. Okay, 4-3, to three, two goals from each team. Korchinski gets another goal as well as Juracek. So a lot of defense and defensive scoring here for us. And Balduke and Holton in for them. So third period, a one-goal lead for the Hawks. We need to keep that. And if we can get another goal, that would be huge, as I've said before. Um, shots are 39-21. to 21. We actually got three shots in that one minute there. That was pretty crazy. Uh, we have, we're up to 40 shots now, and Zavergine is having a great game as Lindstrom ties it up, and Saros not having a good game on the other end. A minute left, and we will go into overtime here in game number three. And honestly, it's on an elimination game. With how long that last game took, I am not even going to jump into it. So overtime here. Can we get an overtime here in game number three? And that we do. Alex Dabrinkit on the power play under not even five minutes in and we will take a three nothing lead here in the western conference semifinals against the blues all right boys you are one one away from your first chance uh, first trip to the conference finals under my regime can we just take care of the blues in four i've seen my team blow a three nothing lead in this game multiple times so i am not even excited a little bit right now i'm gonna be honest with you so uh let's just Get it over with them four. Not have to worry about it. And let's go to the conference finals. How about that, boys? First period is nothing, nothing. All right. Ten to nine other shots. One in favor of us. Um, I'll take that score, to be honest. Hopefully our offense can uh, can uh, come up big for us here. So, second period is still 0-0. Zero, zero. All right. Uh, they are out shooting us, though, pretty decently, 21-15. to 15. So, we're just going to have to win that goaltender's duel, duel here in the third period. And Connor Bedard, our captain... Was just named captain this season, and he comes up big there with the first goal of this game. A couple power plays for St. Louis. We were able to kill it off. We could use a huge insur insurance marker here. And four minutes left. Can we hit on to this game? A power play for the Hawks. It goes nowhere but the Chicago Blackhawks and one nothing. What a game by UC Saros, by the way. Holy hell, a 34-save shutout. But the Chicago Blackhawks are going to take their first trip to the Western Conference Finals in this series. Can you believe it? As we will await our uh, Conference Final matchup, it's going to be one of Colorado or Vegas, as the East is not settled at all either yet, and it will be the Avalanche once again. So the team that has kicked us out, I believe, multiple times in this series, we will match up against them in the Conference Finals. And I'm, <laughs> I'm scared still because they probably have a lot of their top-end talent. Let's take a look here. And yes, that they do. McKinnon and Ranton and right in their primes, 33 and 32, and they have had a hell of a playoff run so far. Nachuskin still doing good on that first line with them, 10 points. And holy hell, 90 overall, Lucas Reichel, who's been a 60-plus point player for them, and he has had an incredible playoff run. So that is something right there. Barrett Hayton and Landis Scott completing that line. Third line, Frederick Velarde, another former Hawk, Quentin Musty. And then fourth line, a 74 overall in Purinton, Akil Thomas, and John Luke Foodie. So Lucas Reichel, a 90 overall. We, uh, we didn't have room for him, but, I mean, my God, he's definitely developed into what we would have loved from him. Yeah, this is what he was doing for us, and this is he's completely doubled his point total. He's playing on the second line still, so I, I don't get it. And then, my God, 
defensively, Bowen Byron, Kale McCarr, probably the best defensive pairing in the league. And then you got Devon Taves and Broberg, another former Hawk, by the way, on that second pairing. We've seen these guys like Broberg, Reichel, and Musty uh, just last year, I believe, too. So nothing new to us, or maybe it was two years ago. Um, one of the two. Regardless, uh, Merkley and Vlasic on that. Did we have... Uh, yeah, we drafted this guy, Alex Vlasic. Uh, well, I guess the real Chicago Blackhawks did, but um, looks like he didn't play a game for us under my time. So if we traded him, I don't remember when we did. And then, of course, the goalie we did not target, Yaroslav Askarov, who has not had a good playoff run so far, an 895 save percentage, and UC Saros definitely has. So there is a lot of storylines in this series. And if we can finally beat Colorado, that would be huge. The guys we traded, we get revenge on them, and we can go to the Stanley Cup. But, um, yeah, or it can be the other way around. Lucas Reichel gets his revenge. Philip Broberg, Quentin Musty, even Alex Vlasic. Askarov could say we should have targeted him. And, uh, yeah, we're just going to have to play it out here, though. The top two teams in the West squaring off here in the conference finals. Here we go. Game number one in the United Center. Holy hell, this is going to be a hell of a series. First period. All right, one nothing for Colorado. Nathan McKinnon, I am terrified of him. Uh, we are getting outshot by them. one nothing is the score. And we need to change that. So, second period. 2 nothing. Oh, God, God damn it. These two are going to kill us, man. Branton and 2 nothing for the Avalanche. And our offense needs to wake up. There we go. Asking you shall receive Bedard. An early one there. We get a power play as well, but we cannot score. Uh, they are still out shooting us. We need another goal here from our offense. Another power play. There we go. Caswell on the power play. As we remain on the power play still. And we tie this game up right at 2. And the next goal could win the game. And oh, you motherfucker. That's going to be the game winner too, isn't it? That is going to be the... <laughs> Oh, you... <laughs> oh, this this game has to know. As game one is won by Lucas Reichel, who is no longer a Blackhawk, and Philip Broberg is also the first star of this game. And we go down 4-2 to two to the Colorado Avalanche in game one. That is just so funny. That is why you always trade to the other conference in this game. You never trade in your division, especially. And wait, well, Colorado's not in our division, but you never trade in your conference in this game. As we lose to Lucas Reichel there in game one. And that just puts salt right in my mouth. So let's uh, <laughs> let's see if we can respond in game two. That is that is something right there. First period here in game number two. All right, there we go. Two, not, or two to one lead for us. Barrett Hayton opens the scoring, but Theodore and Bedard for us respond back. Shots are 11 to six in our favor. Um, let's hang on this lead, boys. Come on, second period. There we go, 4-2. to two. Power play goal from Debrinket and another one from Nate Chess, continuing his great playoff success. As we go into the third period here, we need a big period from everyone on this team. Early power play for Colorado goes nowhere, turns into a Chicago power play, which also goes nowhere. Halfway through the period, we still retain that three-goal lead. Another power play doesn't go anywhere, but I am good with just shutting the door on this game. There we go, Theodore pretty much puts this game out of reach. 5-1 to one Hawks. And we will take game number two in convincing fashion. Damn, if we could have just hung on to that game. Oh, we could have a 2 nothing lead right now. But at least we do get the win back there. 5-1 to one is your final. As Tampa is up 2 nothing there against Philadelphia in the East. As we move on to game number three here. Um, we won that game. I'm not going to make any changes. If we lose here, I might look, look to make. But we've done good with this roster setup as of now. So... We just, we just got to win these games. Now we're in Colorado. We're in Ball Arena. This is going to be a tough task for us. We know how good the Avalanche fans are. I've seen it in real life. My God, those those motherfuckers are loud. So uh, let's find a way to counteract that with an early goal, hopefully, and uh, just find a way to win this game. First period. That is not a good start. So we did actually get that early goal, but then Landis, Scott, Caton, and, of course, the other former Hawk, Quentin Musty. All they need is uh, the other defenseman to score, and they'll have all of them. So, uh, Catone, like I said, opened the scoring, but Colorado with a 3-1 to one lead. Saros gets up 3 goals on 10 shots. Not a good showing from him so far. So, uh, we need our offense to step up in games like these. Second period. All right, there we go. Debrinket gets us back within 1. Shots are 20-19 to 19 in our favor, so we had a pretty good period there. And a big third period. And you motherfucker, dude. Lucas Reichel on the power play. Another big goal from him as he could put this game away potentially with that one. 
If we score again and don't score after that, he will get the game winner. Only six minutes left there. We're running out of time here. We need two. Three minutes left. We get a power play late, and it goes nowhere. And we fall to Colorado in game number three, four to two. Look. <laughs> so, uh, all right, let, let's just go through this scenario right here. So, Lucas Reichel has the game of his life, a goal and two assists, and five hits in that game. And Askarov plays his ass off. Well, uh, As Saros did not have a good showing in that game. Three goals on 27 shots. Or four goals on 27 uh, shots, excuse me. So, I'm not going to pull Saros. He's been the reason we've been in a lot of these games. Why we've won a lot of these games. And, I'm, yeah, his numbers are still great. So, I'm going to leave him in there. Um, first line has been great. Okay, second line has not been good. So... Who's really not been good? Leonov, 7 points, 18 and 10. So, yeah, Leonov's been the outlier on that line. Um, I, Yeah, Caswell's had 9 points. I'm going to move him up, give him a chance there. Hopefully that'll motivate Leonov to get going. And, I mean, third... Okay, Nazar doesn't have a single point. So I'm going to move up to Silva here. And I'm going to go with that setup. That top pair has been great. Second pair, decent. Third pair, not so much. I could balance it out. We could try Theodore on that top pair, but I'm going to leave that, I think. I mean, that top pair has been so good, I don't want to break them up. But, um, yeah, we just... This is a crucial game. Um, game number four, difference between a tie series and a stranglehold lead from the Avalanche. They would just need to win one of the next three to put us away so we need this is a must win game this is an elimination game for us basically here in game number four and it's going to be in ball arena so we have to uh we have to fight through all the adversity here and if we want to win the cup that's exactly what you're going to have to do it regardless so first period here in game number four colorado's going to have an early power play in this one and it's going to be one to one landis Gog for them and debrinka again he has taken over the points lead in this playoffs and he has been scoring at will right now. Again on the power play. Shots are 14 to 10 in favor of Colorado. Um, just win this game, man. Come on. Huge second period. 2-1 to one, ranting in. That first line hasn't been as loud in the last couple games. Third period. We need to come back. We need a goal to tie it. And okay, right away. Sandy Pelica. I was thinking about breaking up that top pair. He comes up with a huge tying goal for us. Shots are dead even. And fuck! They're captain. Gabriel Landis got. Why can't we ever get that goal, man? We can't ever get that, like, tie changing, that game leading goal, whatever the fuck it's called. Three minutes left. We give up a power play at the end, and we fall. Oh my god, guys. I. There's, there's not what we can do, man. As Tampa sweeps Philadelphia in the East. I mean, that second line has been horrible, man. Minus threes. Alright, I'm going to move Dabrinkit back down. And hopefully Dabrinkit can help that second line. That can get Lenny going on that top line. And then I know Catone scored, but I'm going to move up Shea Theodore. As we are in desperation mode right now. Saros, you've had a hell of a playoff run. You do not deserve this fate if we do go down. But it is not over yet. We still have life. 3-1. to one. We're back in Chicago. We have a little bit to look forward to. We need to respond here in game number 5. Obviously, we are. if we lose again, we're dead. So, um, this is it, man. Game number 5. We're down 3-1 to one in the series. We, uh, we're in win now mode. So, here we go. First period. All right, good start. one nothing. Connor Bedard, he has been very good in this playoffs as well. Can't be upset at him. Shots are 12-9 Chicago. Um, we just, come on, we need to win this game. Second period. All right, 3-1. Bedard has a hat trick already. He is putting the team on his back. The franchise player has a hat trick through two periods. Actually, a period and a half it was. It only took him a period and a half to get three goals. A 3-1 lead in this game. If we choke that away, we just did not deserve to win the series. So, and as soon as I say that, Gabe Velarde starts off the scoring in the third for Colorado, and they get a power play. Um, Nathan McKinnon ties it right back up. You guys got to be fucking kidding me! Oh my god, dude! 
Barrett Hayton. They get three unanswered here in the third. Saros completely shits the bed. Two minutes. Ugh. Fuck. Oh. That is the worst way to lose. That is that is the worst way to lose. Three one lead going into the third, and Saros shits the bed. That's on him. How do you how do you shoot away that good playoff run that you've had? You shoot it away in that. That's how you, that's how you give it away. As Colorado, we're just Colorado's bitch, I guess. We go down in six games and five games to Colorado. Connor Bedard ended being up the leading scorer on our team, twenty points, eleven goals, had a hat trick in that last game. And uh, I don't I, I I don't know what to say. I really I really don't. <laughs>